Did you know that the curse of the Wogan did not actually originate in Gilneas? As a matter of fact, the curse's origins go back to the War of the Ancients and the Druids of the Pack. A group of Kaldori who defied direct orders from Malfurion Stormrage and suffered the consequences. Even more interesting is that had the Druids of the Pack not been, there would never have been a Cenarian Circle. Welcome to my WoW Lore Corner, where I take you through some WoW history you may or may not be familiar with. Today, I will tell you the story of the Walking Curse. The tale I'm about to tell can be read in depth in the official WoW miniseries Curse of the Worgen. I have put a link to the books in the description below if you're interested in reading more about the curse. Let us begin. The story of the Worgen begins with the Druids of the Pack. This group of Night Elf Druids finds its origin after the Sundering and the conclusion of the War of the Ancients. We know that during this war, many ancients lost their lives, including Gaudron, the Wolf Spirit. Gaudron is important to our tale. Differing from the other ancients, Gaudron represented the ferocity and savagery of the wild, and according to the legend, the moon goddess Elune herself sought to tame him, for she scorned the wolf for his aggression and bloodlust. Yet she never succeeded, and her disapproval resulted in a great rage in Gaudron, anger that became the root of his strength. You may not know this, but it wasn't until after the war that Malfurion Stormrage, the father of Druids, began teaching other Night Elves the ways of shifting forms and transformation, the core of Druidic mastery. The Druids would channel the essence of an ancient to change forms, and some Night Elves began channeling the essence of Gaudron, becoming able to assume the pack form, the visage of the wolf. Knowing Gaudron's nature and the rage inside the ancient, it is unsurprising that the pack form was volatile and very difficult to control. Malfurion himself judged it dangerous enough to forbid its use, for he himself had tried to control it and failed. But that did not stop the druids of the pack. Despite the official end of the War of the Ancients, the remnants of Savius' forces were not satisfied. Together with the remaining demon forces of the Burning Legion, the satyrs continued their war on the Keldori, set on wiping out the rage entirely. Many Night Elves lost their lives in the prolonged battle, and one young druid, desperate and angry, went to Malfurion for a solution. Rala was his name, and he pleaded with the druidic leader to let the Night Elves utilize the pack form, for Rala perceived Gaudron's rage and ferocity to be the only thing which could save the Kaldori and put an end to the endless slaughter. What Rala overlooked, but caused Malfurion to remain steadfast in his decision, was how assuming the pack form turned the Night Elf who used it feral and wild. Any druid who used the form was immediately consumed by Gaudron's rage and lost themselves to savagery, killing anyone and everyone before disappearing to become part of the wild. Despite Malfurion's orders and warnings, Rala and a priestess by the name of Belisra defied the orders. Was it obstinance, desperation or sorrow which led them to do so? Maybe it was all three. Belisra had lost her love to the war, and Rala had been able to speak with some of the druids who had been said to be lost to the form, the druids of the pack. The undeniable power of these druids could not be ignored, but neither could their insanity. Rala knew about the legend of Elune and Gaudron, and though the goddess herself had failed, 
where La decided to attempt to control the spirit of the wolf to control the pack form. To do so, he and Belisra created an item infused with a loon's essence and power, the scythe of a loon. To create the scythe, Rila and Belisra combined their powers. Belisra used her powers as a priestess of a loon to create a staff, and together with a fang from the wolf ancient himself, the fang of Goldrin, the two wielded a powerful weapon, and the scythe worked enabling Rila to direct the terrible rage and power of Gaudron, but the scythe demanded a gruesome price. As Rila took on the shape of the wolf, the shape twisted and warped, becoming a half-humanoid, half-wolf, burning Rila from the inside to contain the rage of Gaudron and the power of Loon simultaneously. Grotesque though it might be, Rila embraced his form and became known as the first druid of the scythe, the Alpha Prime, the very first Worgen. Rila's next step was to encourage the druids of the pack to subject themselves to the power of the scythe and be blessed by it. As they did, their form was twisted too turning them into Worgen to stand with the other night elves against the satyr, retaining their minds without attacking their friends and family. The other night elves were shocked, not only because the druids of the scythe fought alongside them, but because of their brutality as they tore through one satyr after another, rage apparent in their terrible attacks. The war against the satyr was won, but all was not well. Rila was not satisfied. He turned to Malfurion, demanding his blood and justice for the death of Belisra's love and Rila's friend, Arvel. As such, in the end, the druids of the scythe too turned against their own, against the Kaldori who stood with Malfurion. Not much different from the unstable pack form, except the worgen form was contagious. Those bitten began to change at the first bite, succumbing to the rage of Gordon too, and becoming the first subjects of the Warden Curse. Malfurion managed to escape, along with the Kaldori who had been spared the cursed bite, but the Kaldori leader had learned a terrible lesson. The price and risk of the way of the Druid. To try to prevent future druids from experimenting with other forms, Malfurion sought to establish an order. Many WoW players know the Cenarian Circle as the druids you encounter in Sengar Marsh. Led by Cenarians, we come upon their camps all over Azeroth, and we can even grind our way to a reputation mount, the Cenarian War Hippogriff. But you might not know that the Order of the Cenarian Circle was first created as an attempt to organize and direct the Druids along a correct route, to establish a tradition of teachings as opposed to young Druids' own experimentation of transformation. The Order was first and foremost created as a direct result of the disaster of the Scythe of Loon and the curse of the Worgen. Just establishing the Cenarian Circle was not the only measure Malfurion took, however, after the Druids of the Scythe's attack. He and the Cenarian Circle sought to stop the spread of the curse and stop the Worgen from committing further brutalities. After the defeat of Lord Saviors and the Burning Legion, the Night Elves were granted immortality and access to the Emerald Dream. And the dream is where Malfurion sought to trap the Worgen Night Elves. In the dream, there was a mighty tree, Daryl Nir, which could soothe the hearts of beasts in the dream. Malfurion knew so, for it had soothed the insanity within him when he first lost himself to the pack form. For Rila and the Druids of the Scythe, this would be a kind punishment sentenced to an eternal dream of the wild. Now Malfurion just needed a way to access the Emerald Dream. The answer was the Scythe of Loon. 
As it had created the worgen, it could also be used to contain them. And with its powers tied to a loon, it could tear a gap in reality to access the Emerald Dream. But the scythe was in the hands of Belisra. Belisra was, after the battle against the Druids of the Scythe, mortified and ashamed of what she had created through the use of the weapon, blaming herself for the death of so many Kaldori. So she was the one to come to the Cenarian Circle, asking them to use the scythe to end the horror she had created. She would also take up an important role in the ploy, being the one to trick Rela and his Druids of the Scythe into the open to face the Cenarian Circle. Once the Worgen arrived, they stood little chance and were banished to the Emerald Dream to slumber for eternity. But history had other plans. Because the Scythe of Loon was still on Azeroth, history does not tell us who kept the Scythe of Elune, or who wielded it after the capture of the Druids of the Scythe, but we must assume it was hidden away somewhere for safekeeping. And though Rila thought the Scythe had allowed the Druids to control the rage of Gordran and the nature of the beast, it was quite the opposite. You may remember when Elune sought to tame the wolf, he only became angrier and wilder in the same way, through the creation of the scythe, Vala had allowed the savage nature and ferocity of the wild to master him. The curse of the walking guaranteed that the beast within those afflicted would always win over their sanity. With Rila and the Worgen locked away in the Emerald Dream, the first part of our story ends here. But the horrors of the Worgen curse are far from over. The Worgen were trapped in the Emerald Dream, yes, but what Malfurion had presumed would be a pleasant dream was in fact a nightmare to the Worgen. Though they were dreaming of the wild, they were always seeking a way to escape. And while Malfurion knew the soothing effect Daryl Nia could have, it could not bring the Worgen back to sanity. The peace and quiet lasted for thousands of years, until it didn't. A magician of Dalron, by the name of Ur, had begun researching the Worgen and the curse. Though he did not know the full extent of it, he understood the danger of the curse and knew that the ferocity of Gaudron should not be released upon Azeroth again, lest it would end in disaster. Ur writes in his book, It is my hope that no Dalaran wizard seeks out the Worgen, even if done in light conscience. For no pact may be struck, no secrets may be learned, no good can come from these beasts. They are best left to their world, for if found in ours and not destroyed, our peril will be dire. In game, the Book of Ur can be found in Shadowfang Keep. Those of you who have read it may thus know how dangerous the mage perceived the Worgen to be. Unfortunately, Ur's teachings were found by Archmage Aragal, a former mage of Dalron and a patriot of Gilneas. He did not heed Ur's warnings, thinking he was different, that he could somehow tame the power of the Worgen he should end up being the one to bring the walking curse back to Azeroth. His story begins after the Scourge had destroyed Dalaran, sending Aurogal fleeing to Shadowfang Keep, right outside the Great Wall of Gilneas. It was around this time that the Scourge began attacking and threatening the city of Gilneas. Fearing the lives of his citizens, King Gen Greymane sought out Aurogal, asking for help in protecting Gilneas and fending off the Scourge forces, no matter the method. Aragal did not hesitate to think of the Worgen. Why Aragal thought he could just up and summon an unknown and ferocious force like a Worgen to follow his command is a mystery. Arrogance? Desperation? We may never know.
Using Ur's research, Aurigal managed to summon the slumbering worgen from the Emerald Dream. But unsurprisingly, the worgen did not become the allies nor the weapons Aurigal and Greymane had hoped they would. While the worgen leader their Alpha Prime, Rala, led his pack to take down the Scourge and succeeded, they turned on Aragal and the forces of Gilneas next. Though they had been slumbering in the Emerald's Dream for thousands of years, their anger and bloodlust was far from lessened. Quite the opposite. The Worgen took down anything within sight, and though it took longer for them to transform, those bitten turned into Worgen themselves, just like the Kaldora I had all those years ago. And most of you know the story from here. From the Gilnea's starting zone, where Halford Ramsey investigates the strange deaths and a wolf cult, and where we learn that the Worgen have sided with the Forsaken, intending to convert as many Gilneans as possible. Gilneas falls, and the refugees seek sanctuary in Teldrassil until the tree is no more. And this is where the story of the Worgen blends with the present in the World of Warcraft game. As adventurers, heroes and champions, the players continue the story of the Worgen themselves. On Azeroth, there are a total of nine groups, or packs, if you will, of Worgen in present WoW. The Greymanes, whose homeland is Gilneas, the most famous Greymane we know is probably Gen Greymane. The Bloodfang family, Gilnean Worgen who support the Gilneas Liberation Front and fight the Scourge in Silverpine Forest. This group is led by Lord Darius Crowley. The Worgen cult known as Blood Moon, whom we encounter in the Grizzly Hills in Northrend. The Lycantho Vandals, followers of Lycantho, found in Mount Hygel. The Nightbane Pack, feral Worgen who live in Duskwood. The Brash Water Crew, which are a pack of Worgen Pirateers. The Moonrage Pack. The Shadowfang Pack. You probably know this group of Worgen best from encountering them in Shadowfang Keep. And finally, the Terror Wolf family. This pack of Worgen were left behind in Ashenvale by Veland Starsong, a night elf who should continue the story of the Scythe of Loon. And Aurigal, he is driven mad by guilt and eventually adopts the Worgen as his children and curse to bear. You and I can find him in Shadowfang Keep, serving under the Alpha Prime. We take him out, thus ending his story. Now, the attentive listener will know that this does not conclude our story of the Scythe of Loon. However, that's a tale for another day. And thus, we've reached the conclusion of today's WoW Law Corner. Thank you so much for watching and for liking this video. If you want me to continue the story and discuss the mysterious story of the Scythe of Loon, let me know. Or if you have other parts of WoW lore you want me to cover, leave a comment below. Take care.